Rick, so I wanted to ask you uh, about this IDFA announcement, which um, came up fairly recently. Now it's been delayed. Uh, what do you hear in the industry in terms of uh, your customers, um, its impact, how to ameliorate that impact through solutions that you guys are working on or that you could work on? Uh, level set for us where things are at. Well, I think there was general concern uh, about the change uh, just because it really makes it harder for our customer base to uh, identify the users and talk to our users, their users in a more personalized manner. And so there was great concern about that. Now, Epsilon has been preparing uh, for this type of world uh, for over eight years now. And so we are, we are set up to deal with the situation uh, probably better than most. Um, but the concern from clients was definitely, you know, loss of personalization, uh, really loss of ability to optimize and control their spend because it, it really uh, keeps them in the dark on that piece of uh, the business. And then really overall um, how the entire digital landscape with some of these moves are being compartmentalized into certain companies and uh, it doesn't really give you that holistic view across uh, the consumer landscape. Rick, so tell us how you guys have been planning and what the Epsilon, you know, solution is to this uh, challenge. Well, we've really built the foundation of um, putting our end users first. So we've built a, you know, privacy by design platform. And I know a lot of people say that, but we've actually engineered it from the ground up over the last eight years to deal with things like um, uh, decentralized uh, uh, individuals, um, loss of third party cookies, all those things that uh, are starting to come into fruition. Um, we really built without the need for those in place. Um, one, to provide the highest level of privacy and security for our end users. Um, second, to provide uh, really uh, the strongest ability to personalize for our clients. And then the third thing is really to protect both clients and consumer data so that it's used um, with balance and, and um, uh, with the express wishes of the, uh, the data owner. Um, that, that's really been the big piece of it. Um, a lot of places, uh, you know, consumers don't know where their data is going. Customers don't know where their data is going. We really try to hold both those two at the highest regard we can to make sure that they're being effectively used with consent uh, of the party. So Rick, not to get too deep in the weeds, but what are the sort of the data points, the elements that you guys use that, you know, are, are, are useful in sort of, uh, targeting that, you know, don't rely on third-party cookies. What is uh, the secret sauce over there at Epsilon? Um, well, we have a foundation in transactional data that we get from our, our partners, uh, both uh, client partners and also publishing partners uh, and third parties to really build the foundation of our identity. And then um, from the ground up, we've built um, uh, our network of those partners to be able to provide this identity at a very high level both in scale, you know, accuracy and longevity, which is something that uh, is key to driving that ongoing uh, conversation with consumers. Rick, I wanted to ask about Epsilon in the context of Publicis Group, and uh, I know it's been about 13 months since the acquisition. Uh, tell us a little about the integration and, and you know, sort of the, you know, your role, the role of Epsilon in the greater Publicis Group, and as a result, the used by so many of the publicist clients. What, what sort of is the, the direction roadmap? Where do things stand and where do you hope they go? So when we joined the group back in uh, July of 2019, uh, we really set out uh, a couple broad goals. First, um, a 90 day integration goal where we used our core ID and our data to integrate with publicist products uh, right off the bat so that we started using them across the publicist landscape. And we hit that goal in 89 days and we're very proud of that. The second piece though, was to work within all the, uh, all the aspects of the group to centralize, you know, all the product development and product solutions uh, within Epsilon so that we could drive greater scalability for clients uh, across the group. Um, that included bringing in uh, the Publicis People Cloud into the Epsilon realm. And we've expanded that and rebranded it as Epsilon People Cloud. Um, but also expanding on that footprint to taking the things like dynamic creative optimization that is very near and dear to the group, 
um, better ID strategy so our clients can uh, not only uh, identify their audiences, but activate those audiences and measure and optimize them. Uh, and then providing a greater uh, ability for our clients to manage their first party data to really leverage that in all their marketing aspects and to understand their consumers at a very uh, disaggregate level. So those three things we have really driven across the group. Um, in the last 13 months, um, we've seen a tremendous amount of growth there, both with group clients and our own uh, Epsilon organic clients taking advantage of some of those uh, some of those capabilities. And now in our next, our year two plan, it's really expanding on that, driving that, uh, that data and identity capability deeper into all of our client base and really expanding worldwide into EMEA and APAC with those solutions also. And Rick, uh, just kind of getting back to our original chat about uh, IDFA, the deprecation of uh, third party cookies and, and the big changes. Um, Looking ahead to next year, where does this leave the industry? Uh, how might it be impacted? If and 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 you know, what are solutions you see, not just from Epsilon, but kind of the the, the movement by by buyers and sellers and the and the um, and the programmatic ecosystem? How how do you see things changing uh, as a result of all this? Um, I think it's going to be it's going to be difficult both for marketers uh, and publishers uh, because uh, people marketing, they're going to lose their ability to understand their users across sites. And so I think it's going to drive up uh, a lot of waste because uh, things like frequency caps and understanding consumers and giving them the right amount of information is going to be difficult. Uh, I think publishers are going to be hurt because uh, you're really going to uh, lessen the impact of qual uh, quality publishers versus uh, publishers that don't invest in that much into their quality. So um, their pricing is gonna be normalized because of it. Um, and it's just gonna be difficult in general to you know, operate in that landscape. So uh, what it's gonna cause you know, both um, technology companies outside of you know, the big walled gardens to do is to really form partnerships to work together to have enough scale to combat you know, some, of these, uh, some of these pieces being lost. And then the biggest impact is on the consumer, where the consumer is gonna go from a world where um, marketers understand them and give them the right messages that they need to drive the outcomes they're trying to do, to one where you're gonna be left thinking, well, does this brand really know me anymore? Because they're, they're over-frequencing me on certain sites and they don't really understand the, you know, the entirety of what I'm about. Um, and it's going to be very disconnected. So it's almost going to be a step back from the consumer standpoint and, and advertising is going to be probably less relevant to the individual and more relevant to the site that they're on. And uh, that just creates a lot of challenges and a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of difficulties um, for, you know, all three aspects of the industry.